gentlemen, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, this contest is at cut weight, 30 minutes duration, six rounds, five minutes each round. One fall, one submission, or one knockout to be declared the winner. Introducing two ladies and gentlemen from the red corner of Bradford, Colin Bennett. And from the blue corner of Leeds, ladies and gentlemen, Tony King. Seconds out, round one. Hello again, Grapple fans, and welcome once more to the Spa Centre here in Leamington for another freestyle wrestling session, and this could be quite interesting. Colin Bennett, we know, of course, from on the left there, from Wilsdon near Bradford in the normal dark trunks. 11 stone six of Colin Bennett. But uh, Tony Kane from Leeds is the name of the blonde wrestler with the fancy trunks and the fancy tights and the extraordinary looking uh, wrestling vest. Let's hope he can wrestle as good as he looks because he's up against Colin Bennett, one of the neatest welterweights in the country. Six five minute rounds, one fall will tell us just how he gets on. Referee Alan Colbeck, the welterweight champion of Great Britain, of uh, Europe, I beg your pardon. Welterweight champion of Europe, who, uh, of course, is in the same weight as the man in the dark trunks, Tony Bennett. Tony Kane, a good deal heavier, 12 stone 10, well up in the middleweight bracket. into a, a very quick head scissors indeed. Quite so worried about his hairstyle yet as uh, the Bobby Barnes Adrian Street pair, but nonetheless, shades of the uh, famous Hells Angels. The first time we've ever seen him on television, of course, so none of us have any idea how he's going to turn out. But he's got up against quite a boy here in Colin Bennett this afternoon. Happy to get Kane in that position. You might get a close-up of Kane's hands there with all his 
family's names on the fingers tattooed. Oh, then it walked into that. <laughs> that uh, big tattoo on it, Kane's chest, we'll have a close-up look if we can in the interval. This is a 6-5 minute round, one full contest, remember? The second private warning, so the next time it's a public warning, says Alan Kodak. Just over 10 seconds to go. Uh, there's the uh, it's, it's uh, a tattoo of two wrestlers in action and we can't see the bottom half of the tattoo which is makes it rather curious as to why he wears that curious looking vest in the first place Tony Kane of Leeds 12 stone ten of him he's got a weight advantage of over a stone over Colin Bennett and it's my guess he's gonna need it Seconds out, round two. A drop it to Bennett. Bennett in the dark trunks there. A start of round two. One fall decides this contest here at the uh, Spa Centre Lemington. And Alan Colbeck already watching Tony Kane a bit carefully. Side leg hank up between the legs, beautifully handled there by uh, Colin. Hey, not, 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 not. Cameras picked that up all right, but uh, of course the referee unsighted from that one. He's got to give him a public warning for that. Got to. Yes, he's got it. Johnny Katz is the first public warning. The angle of that arm was a beautiful drop kick follow up, too. But the angle of that arm needle was really something held by Bennett. That's what drop came in the first place. Starting to go in this second round. Despite his weight advantage, deciding to stay down for quite a lengthy breather. Coming back with the toe axe. Well, the uh, 
Hayes is uh, one under his family's name, obviously. I think it's Andy the underneath one, I think. Again, the angle of that arm that Bennett pulls it across. It's his man down without even any effort to grob it. Didn't, wasn't allowed to continue with it. Oh, yes, great rolling arm. So, and uh, Tony Kane doesn't want any more of that for the moment. Just a minute to go, round two. Good forearm on the ropes, he timed that nicely. Three, four, stand up! Stand up! On your feet. Now he's taking the, taking Colin Bennett's face along the middle rope, for which he gets his second public walk. Second public order. Two in the second round against Kane, and of course the second is his last. Yes. Yes. Tony Kane not making a tremendous impression on his first television appearance so far. That's right on the bell of round two. Everybody turns their hand to wish for matchmaking on occasions. I'm no exception. I would like to see Colin Bennett, this boy from Wilsdon near Bradford, take on Johnny Saint in a 10 rounder, or at least an 8 rounder with two falls to the side. That, in my opinion, would be one of the finest welterweight contests we may have ever see on television. If I can persuade the promoters to matchmake it. Second third, round three. Round three, four rounds to go. No score. Colin Bennett in the dark trunks versus Tony Kane. Kane with two public warnings against him in round two. And then as he steps back and breaks when told, he's going to get a disqualification here. Yes, caught him off balance nicely and a fair, fair posting to follow back. Colin Bennett, part-time wrestler, part-time West Yorkshire bred for division of the Fire Brigade. Both of which occupations I personally admire tremendously. had enough of that uh, inside treatment, although it was legal. Uh, that wasn't, that was definitely inside punch. We saw it, but the referee not positive of it, not positive enough to disqualify. Uh, they did, he caught it that while, that's enough. Alan Colbeck says, that's enough, came out, back to the dressing room. Disqualification in the third. May not be over yet. It's over officially as Ernest Ball went. Ladies and gentlemen, after, after one minute, 45 seconds of round three, Tony Kane 
is disqualified. Grappling fans, for sure, will remember the great Dennis Mitchell of Bradford. There he is. It's his first return to the ring as far as television is concerned for several years. He's been busy building up his own business. More about that later. But it's nice to see him back in wrestling part-time. He's just returned from Germany to take on his first television appearance to take on Gwyn Davies, the heavyweight champion of Wales, the big man of 17 stone six from my state, South Wales. There he is. Mitchell versus Davies. Seconds out, round one. Six five minute rounds, two falls to decide. Mitchell the blonde with the white boots. Now let's see what, whether he gives us the action that he used to give us a few years back when I thought for one that he'd retired from the ring. He's got a couple of sons, Dennis Mitchell, who he's training for the ring, but a bit young yet, of course, too. For joint promotions, I imagine, to be interested. But he used to be really fast and powerful, Dennis Mitchell. Caught in an arm lock there, all right. Trying to get it with the joints. Just about made it too. Enough to get clear. Six five minute rounds. Two falls, two submissions or a knockout. Decide this winner. International heavyweights. Alan Colbeck, the referee and our main part of the afternoon's program. You want me to? That's long, baby. In fact, today there are two main bouts, as often uh, have been before, because Ray Steele versus Pete Curry follow this one, and that could be really an interesting one as well. Go into one of those double interlocks with uh, Grim Davis because you're asking for trouble right for this time. No! Nicely up though. Ooh, attempted the rep, but Davis wouldn't go. Still Mitchell trying to force him over. But on a weaker man, that arm would have broken then for sure. He just did not go with that whip at all. Fingers, just a question now. Oh. Decided to not go any further with that one. Grab it, pull on, grab it. The left hand of Davis behind the head, pulling it on to the wrist. To the right. 
Nice arm roll by Mitchell. Wrist lever, still held by the tattooed arms of Dennis Mitchell. Grapevine Davis. Now then, can Mitchell uh, turn into the head scissors now? Ooh. Well, that's a way out of a head scissors we haven't seen for quite a bit. Davis hasn't seen it either. Don't think he likes it too much. I think we're going to have a little uh, of the old Gwyn Davis following that one. Less than a minute to go. Look at that arm leaving. Little chance of bending the elbow there. And that's what he wants to do more than anything. Still held against the joint. Finally, Davis forces it with the joint into the backhand. Nicely going around with it, turning into the hole beautifully, but takes the whip quite happily on the bell of round one. Let's have a close-up look at Davis, see whether he's still angry or whether he's still half grim. But not happy to stay in his corner at all. In fact, he's standing in the center of the ring now, this big giant from Meisting, South Wales, who owns 14 ponies and is a great horseman, ex-rugby union man, and a pretty big, strong wrestler too. So he's quite a few careers he's got, Gwyn Davies. I'm in half the ring. Seconds out, round two. Round two and no score. Five rounds to go. Two falls to decide it. Dennis Mitchell, Bradford, Gwyn Davis, Wales. Davis, the big man with the black hair on the left hand, facing us now. Well, that's a pull on Gravit. I'm trying a lift from it. Referee Colbert, close attention, but attendance, but no worry about a move like that. You can do nothing foul there. Dennis Mitchell not tall enough for that at all. No chance. The arm lever against the joint over the shoulder. Unless he puts it over his head, he's got no chance. Full Japanese trying to hold a temp by Davis. He gets it second time. with a forearm, isn't he? And again, that knee to the side of the head. Davis, the second time, does not like that. This time, he's not grinning. We've seen Gwyn Davis with that left wrist bandaged, but uh, it's mostly protective. 
had a little trouble with it in the ring a few weeks ago and it keeps recurring so he binds it up tight to prevent a recurrence oh it's after the break <laughs> Mitchell says to the referee get out of the way I'll handle him don't worry Couple of minutes left in round two, and this heavyweight bout really warming up now as Davis is angry, Mitchell getting angry. And anything can happen in this one from now on. All legitimate lifts in the backhammer so far. Mitchell complaining, but he's got nothing to complain about. Looking at the referee, but it was all perfectly legal that. Just not tall enough, Mitchell, to complete what he wanted to then. <laughs> oh, that attack perfectly, perfectly illegal. And Mitchell knows it. Thirty seconds to go, round two, and Davis with the single finger of the lock here, aiming for the straight arm left if he can get it. Mitchell has got to avoid this if he can, and the bell to end the round might just help him. Still got eight seconds. sure that grapple fans join me in uh, saying how pleasant it is to see this great heavyweight wrestler from Bradford back in the ring on television he's since been uh, to quite a few tournaments in Germany since he came back into wrestling but of course he spent most of his time building up his own catering business in Bradford Dennis Mitchell who went from 19 stone four down to 15 seven Seconds out, round three. So he's lost nearly four stone in training since he decided to come back to part-time wrestling, Dennis Mitchell. But by doing so, of course, he's now giving away nearly two and a half stone to the big Welshman, Gwyn Davis. Davis there with the black hair. Two falls to the side. He's received several private warnings. The next one could be public. Yep. Alan Kobeck, you may have heard then, saying you took the second private warning and that's your last private one. <laughs> and then that left now. He didn't use the top rope, so. He can lift him like that if he wants to. That use of the rope, though, is the one that the referee's watching for. <laughs> Mitchell using a little of his power with the face. Oh, yes, again, that knee is doing the damage on the ears, on the side of the head there somewhere, and... 
Gwyn Davis not happy about that move at all. The third time he's been the wrong end of it. Oh, again, that left. A jerk movement, I think, up the back. Back hammer, yes, definitely. One of the strictest rules in freestyle wrestling is that you must never jerk your opponent's limb with the intention of breaking it. It can be, of course, anybody could break an arm or a leg at any time if they wanted to in this uh, freestyle wrestling. But that's why it's such a strict rule referees keep to. An intentional break or an attempt at an intentional break that could send him right out of the ring fast. And also, of course, no promoter will use him for a long time if he does that. So the toe and ankle to Davies. That won't please the Welshman too much either. Treatment on his left wrist. <laughs> and his punch in the back. Referee spotted it, or did he? No, he didn't. Got round a little too late. Colbeck raced around the back there, but too late. So that wrist obviously worrying him a little more. Davis trying to get in a position for that punch again. But still the referee gets round too fast for him. There he got it in that time. And he's got a public warning for it. Davis trying to pretend that was a side of the hand shot, but uh, well, our camera's so different, and so did the crowd here. Now, the semi jab strangle hold, Mitchell with his own arm through the hold. Putting on the pressure at the side of the throat as well. Come on, You know, Davis. Trying to get the referee to count, but of course the shoulder blades are not done. He's more likely to get a submission here than he is a pinfall. Ten seconds, round three. The bell will save Davies. Break around. So Gwyn Davies is not going to have it all his own way, despite the fact that he's should have the advantage over Mitchell in nearly every way. Height, weight, probably strength and fitness, considering his opponent hasn't been in the game for quite a few months. Seconds out, round four. Wouldn't this be great for Dennis Mitchell to make his comeback on television and beat this giant from Wales? Three rounds he's got to show us he can do it. Two falls to the side. No score, but one public warning against Gwyn Davies on the right there in the dark trunks, dark hair. Oops. It, quite legal. Just snatching, chopping the wrist away as the wrist grabs the neck. Get into the single. 
butting the, the biceps there, really. Again, that knock away of the wrist, backhammer, throw from it. Nice quick moves there by Davis, and all legitimate. Again, the head towards the biceps. Oh yes, a Davis suspension hold, there's got to be a submission. But Davis won't release. I think he's got a public warning for not releasing as well as the, as the submission there. submission the first submission to Quinn Davis and ladies and gentlemen Quinn Davis receives his second and final public warning Davis looking around at the rough as if he didn't know why that public warning was given that second public warning which of course is his final one Davis leading now by one submission to nil over Mitchell, but two public warnings against him for second one for holding onto that submission hold far too long. Seconds out, round four. Now Mitchell has got to avoid that same suspension hold if he possibly can. Two rounds to go. Davis going straight for the same arm. Mitchell in real trouble with that left arm now. And Davis knows about it, goes straight for it again. Again, the lift and the backhand. Oh, oh, yes, we saw the fire and we saw that one. That's sort of the ref. One public warning against Mitchell for that. Mitchell the third public warning. Mitchell saying, and I allowed a little retaliation, but no, not that much. Not a punch in the stomach and then to the face as well. <laughs> so the public warning's really flying around in this boat. And the back elbow to the stomach in between the forearm jabs. Mitchell's going to get another one if he's not careful. Now again the punch, which we saw, but the ref didn't. And a stranglehold of Davis. for Mitchell and the flying tackle. The question is whether Mitchell can drop the balance there. Trying to suplex, the suplex didn't work, it goes down in a cross press. Oh, so nearly the equaliser for Dennis Mitchell there. Another chance of it for the side folding press. Three, he's got it. Equalizing Paul to Dennis Mitchell. And a 
tremendous effort it was. He had a terrific chance just before it. And now he goes over to his opponent's corner and just gloats a little bit. But he got the equaliser in the fifth. Now, can he get the winner in the final round? Seconds out, round six. Round six, one fall each. Submission fall to Davis in the fourth. The equalising fall, pinfall to Mitchell in the fifth. One each. And Davis, of course, got two public warnings against him, whereas Mitchell only has one. The stranglehold again to Davis. Punch to the nose, which the camera saw quite easily but unfortunately they returned with his back to the ref as he delivered it he's now kidding us or trying to kid the referee but he's hurt his hand from a chop Now Mitchell has a chance now with the finger interlocks. Oh, and again, Grim Davis trying to distract the referee's attention by saying that he hurt his wrist or hand from that side chop. But of course, we saw different from the camera point of view. And so did the crowd, as you can hear. Can't wait for Dennis Mitchell to get the winner now. Right to the old oven. And the second public warning to Mitchell for Mitchell not breaking went to. Davis still got the advantage from that finger with a lot because of his height. <laughs> and he's trying to do the suspension hold again. Very nearly brought him up in it, but the Mitchell brought up the knee just in time. He gets that suspension hold again, that elevated wrist lock. That could be the end of Mitchell for sure. Oh, well, there again, Davis again, and he's out. He's out. Mitchell's done it. Out of his qualification, but. Third public warning to Davis sends him automatically back to the dressing room. So Dennis Mitchell on his first appearance back in the ring on television gets a win first time. Not the way he'd like to do it, but it's a win just the same. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, in round six, the referee disqualifies Quinn Davis. The winner, the winner is Dennis Mitchell. Mitchell still wanted to prove that he can go on and still lick it. A great return to the ring anyway for Dennis Mitchell. There he is, must be proud of his first reappearance. All the punches against him, he's still turned out the way. This contest is at heavyweight, six rounds, five minutes each round. One fall, one submission, or one knockout to the winner. Introducing two ladies and gentlemen from the red corner of Wakefield, Ray Steele. And from the blue corner of Salford, Peter Curry. So for our final bout on the program here this afternoon from Leamington, Ray Steele.
Uh, now from Wakefield, I heard that uh, Ernest Baldwin billing in there, but actually born in Tingley, Yorkshire. 15 stone of race tail there, the blonde on the right, versus Pete Curry in the leotard. Pete Curry from Salford, Lancashire at 16 stone four. Second half, round one. One fall to decide this six round contest. The blonde race deal in the trunks versus Pete Curry. First time we've seen him uh, in the ring on television as a heavyweight, or maybe the second. He was 15 stone, just reached the 15 stone mark last time. He was uh, 14 and a half, quite some time in the mid heavyweights. Finally, he's got up to the big bracket. But he's still giving away one stone, four pounds here to Pete Curry. Big though he is. See how long Curry takes to break that. <laughs> Trying to avoid that whip, he did twice, but the third time got him down. Still the double-handed wrist lever by Curry. Hey. Reaching for the quarter Nelson and getting it. Simple backhammer. Hasn't even locked it off. Oh, no. Notice he's not jerking that arm further up between the blades. He's just shoving it, hoping for a submission. Or at least a weak one. Yes, a bit, bit risky that uh, reaching for the crotch hole. It's uh, you'd never get the slam in from it anyway. Unless you can release that arm first. Grapevine steel. Now he's really got the, himself balanced up to take even further advantage from this backhammer if he wants to. Less than a minute now. Almost developed into an arm lock counter, but not quite. Never really, <laughs> really got him down from it, but it worried him just the same. So you can see by those arm movements now. So it's Curry in first there with a jump step over toe hole, which he doesn't bother to follow through at all.
Ten seconds. Round one. Nice switch from uh, hand to hand there, but he's left it a bit late in this round. Ray Steele, build from Wakefield, and exactly 15 stone in weight. The man who won the intermediate light heavyweight title at Great Britain before turning pro way back in 69. This is the man who, of course, was trained by the referee here this afternoon, Alan Colbeck. Colbeck must be pretty proud of his uh, protege here, I should think, the way he's developing. Tremendous potential, this man in the heavyweight bracket. Seconds out, round two. Round two, five rounds to go. Ray Steele versus Pete Curry. That's Steele with the blonde from Wakefield. In the light, in the light trunks there. No. And only one fall necessary to decide this contest. No. Still tall enough for this now. No. We saw Dennis Mitchell try that on Gwen Davis to no avail in the last bout, but Steele has enough height to make it pay. Steel switching hands frequently. Oh, he had to go over Curry because the arm was twisted right round forwards. If he hadn't, there would have been a nasty snap there. scissors will worry Steele very much. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, he won't do it unless he turns into it. Figure four leg lock counter. So straight from being at the wrong end of head scissors, he has the advantage. Here's the double arm. I don't think that Steele will even try and get the 16 no, no, stone no. four curry back in a surfboard. No, he's... Oh, no. Didn't even think that. No. Curry. No. Oh. No, no, no. Couple of minutes to go in the second round of six. Japanese triangle hold with the right knee acting as the stroke against the neck.
has made it too. Curry threw him just as he was making it. Very quick there, Curry, but going for the double leg grab to get to Boston. Full press now on the cross press, but only gets a count of one. Thirty seconds to go, round two. So the side head shot by Steele, pulling it on to a body check, but only four seconds. This uh, big man, Pete Curry, is from Salford in Lancashire, 16 stone four. He actually started as an amateur for a couple of years at the famous Bolton Harriers Club. He turned pro in the early 60s. He wrestled quite a bit with opposition promoters until joint promotions finally took him on. I am very glad they did. He's turning out to be a great heavyweight. Seconds out, round three. Round three, four rounds to go. One fall decides it. Ray Steele, Pete Curry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make the old, both men. Okay. Stand back. Well, identical so far. Yes, just the half Nelson on there. Three quarter Nelson now. Until Steele got his arm away. Side head chance to Curry. Hey! Something's going from the body check follow up. Hey! Hey! Oh, yeah, lovely trip by Steele. He's got the one, only one. Oh, no. I tried to catch both of them, but he caught the He's really going for the weakness now, Steele. Look at that folder. I think there's little hope of Curry submitting from that. Steele might have uh, put a fairly weakened left leg there with his efforts, but that's about all. Finally, his head gets a little bit too near Curry's left arm, so here comes the counter move. And that same trip on the same leg catches it very well indeed. And more weakness coming up. All he has to do, Curry, is to submit. He loses the bout, but if he's in too much trouble with the pain of that hold, then all he has to do is just tell the referee so. Half Nelson as well by Steele. Go. Go. And a single leg Boston attempt now by Steele. Notice the knee stroke in the back and the foot now. Now will this complete the submission move that Steele's been after? Oh, 
Murray left leg has really been through it. Now Steele tries another form of submission. Similar to the single leg Boston, of course. Same effect. back for Curry there as he tries the short range pile driver from that head scissors. He's only got 30 seconds to last out in this round Curry but to keep that left leg away from trouble. And of course, Steele going straight for it again. But he's got the arm lock, Curry. Can the arm lock win that particular move? Nope. Steele really preparing this leg for a submission hold. is going to be really interesting to see when Curry comes out for round four in half a minute's time he's uh, he's really going to keep that left leg away but still sporting enough to say to his opponent well you've got me really in trouble now follow it up if you can but I think possibly Steele can because he's only got to get one of those trips again follow it up with a single leg boss and I'm afraid our friend Pete Curry good though he is will be in trouble in this bout. Seconds out, round four. Three rounds to go. The first fall decides it. Steele can't wait to get in and grab that left leg again. That's what he weakened it for. So that he can continue on it and get a submission. And he only wants one submission to win this bout. Curry has other ideas. Oh, double arm. Now Curry out suplex. Oh, beautiful suplex. Now it depends how Steele landed on that. If he landed on his neck, he's in trouble. Tables could have turned completely if, it, if he had. And Curry really coming back into this bout now as he posts Steele. And a flying butt to the forehead. Now, which one of that, which one of them is hurt most? Still getting up first. Eight. And Curry from, attacking from down. Steele went too near him. And Curry doing the same thing with Steele down. A flyer, but it didn't work. The slam came without the crutch hold. Steele holding the double knee, and he's got it. But a good effort by both men, and a very good wrestling bout especially that last round it could have gone either way but Steele finally the winner by the one fall necessary in round four ladies and gentlemen in round four with a reverse waist hold and slam the fall of the winning fall to Ray Steele ladies and gentlemen down to Peter Curry ladies and gentlemen her heart please Thank you, Ernest Baldwin and Curry, an unlucky loser, but very sporting as always as he goes down one fall in the fourth. And with that, still happy result for him.